profile of Virginia graduate, the redesign of Covington High School. Yes. Yes. Um, yes, that's an attachment D. We gave you a PowerPoint presentation to look at. Dr. Furman, Mr. Cantrell, Mr. Jones, Ms. Vicki Dooley, and Ms. Bricky, and lots of different committees at Covington High School have been working on this. Uh, plan taking trips to Eastern Montgomery High School uh, and tonight they'd like to give you a overview <coughs> of what they discovered and at the end of the presentation if you have questions I uh, hope you will pose those and we'd like for you to consider taking a vote tonight about whether or not this is an opportunity that we should uh, complete at Covington High School so we can move forward with uh, possibly professional development and helping our staff get ready for this redesign. So, Dr. Furman and Mr. Cantrell, if you would come forward, please. If, if you'd like to come, he may certainly join you all. Because it is a K-12 initiative, so it will, it will impact everyone. Once we get going correctly. Okay, Madam Chair, school board members, Ms. Nee Johnson and Ms. Irvin. You have your PowerPoint in front of you. And I think the the first question would be why are we presenting the redesign of Covington High School and why do we hear profile of Virginia graduate daily? The Virginia Department of Education came out with the revised standards of accreditation mm -hmm. and in the PowerPoint where we have referenced the Department of Education that information came from this document that you'll see in the Virginia Department of Education reference. So within the revised standards of accreditation It's talked about the impact on schools and the impact on students. And the reason that we would even consider such a change with scheduling, with courses, with redesign, is to incorporate the new standards to revise the curriculum and give our students opportunities that not only we feel they need, but obviously the Department of Education feels that they need. So the first five slides, templates, talks about the impact on schools, the accountability, and how that the schools will receive credit, how schools will be evaluated, and how these changes or revised standards of accreditation would be for the incoming class in this fall, class of 2021-2022, so this year's freshman class this fall is where the changes will take place. Also the impact on schools, the school quality indicators. There are six overarching themes for elementary, middle, and high school. So even though we're talking about the redesign of the high school, it also would affect the intermediate school where Mr. Bennett is and the elementary school. And if you notice the um, quality indicators that the schools would be evaluated on proficiency and growth in English, mathematics, science, English achievement gaps, mathematics achievement gaps, and absenteeism. In addition, at the high school level, the high school will be evaluated on graduation and completion index, dropout rate, and college and career readiness. The impact on students, the profile of the Virginia graduate, the five C's, critical thinking, creative thinking, communication, collaboration, and citizenship. Also, um, new graduation requirements emphasize the practical application, performance-based assessments, and the work-based learning opportunities. In addition to the profile of Virginia graduate, the other impact on students that's referenced is, are the course requirements and verified credits effective with this year's ninth graders, fall of 2018, so that would be the class of 2022. Standard credits for standard diploma remains at 22. 
but the difference comes with the verified credits. Instead of six, they will be responsible for five verified credits. Advanced Studies Diploma, the number of standard credits remains at 26. Also, the verified credits move from nine to five. And that's in English reading, English writing, mathematics, science, and history and social science. You also have a visual, the profile of a Virginia graduate, where it's broken into the content knowledge, the workplace skills, career exploration, and community engagement. And each area is explained in the profile of a Virginia graduate. I mentioned uh, work-based learning opportunities. The work-based learning piece is broken into three categories, career exploration, such as job shadowing, mentorship, and an introductory internship. We've also discussed a career exploration class at Jeter Watson for all students. The pre-professional work-based learning category, that's the extended internship, the service learning, and then the career preparation would be the clinical experience, cooperative education, and a registered apprenticeship. So reasons to change from a seven period day to a four by four block schedule. We've discussed the Virginia revised standards of accreditation presented by the Department of Education. We've discussed the profile of Virginia graduate, the revised verified credit requirements, and also the work-based learning opportunities or program. We feel that the block schedule would help with our staffing. We could offer more electives for students, higher level core electives, we could offer more remedial courses as needed, and we hope that it would increase our enrollment at JRTC, especially for our advanced studies students. As we are now, it is very, very difficult for an advanced studies student to participate at Chester River. Okay. Get this next one. Sure. Um, path to our change. Um, some of the things that we've done for the last two years, we've kind of took, taken a look at different opportunities, different schedules. We've looked at a seven period day, a four by four block, an AB block, and also a modified block with last year. The profile of a Virginia graduate has been the driving force with some of the changes that are coming. We developed five committees to look at how we can implement the profile of a graduate. The scheduling committee is the big part with this one. We reviewed the different schedules, the pros and cons of both all of them but with that we also determined that we wanted to take some trips to eastern montgomery to see what a school similar to us looks like the first trip myself miss powell and vicky dooley went and met with administration special education and the director of guidance to get some feedback came back and reported to our committee we discussed what professional development needs we would need for block schedule and that's in a slide later we've met with our student leadership team our parent advisory committee and we've also had one profile of Virginia graduate meeting at the high school and the weather had us canceled tonight for the Jeter Watson one but we'll do that next Monday I believe. We've also taken a trip with the department chairs on February 23rd where we took all of our department chairs to Eastern Montgomery. They had a kind of a master schedule where they could go into classes, talk to students, ask teachers and kind of build that PLC so that we can ask for help for lesson plans, pacing guides, and they were very hospitable for us there with that. And Dr. Furman was Yes, that. yes, she went as well. Very good trip. Okay, so we um, just have just some facts about a four by four block schedule. Students have four semester long courses daily, and you try to schedule two core, two electives. So four courses per semester, a total of eight per year, so they can, uh, students could receive um, eight credits. Teachers teach three courses each semester, or six per year. A teacher's planning per day may be as much as one block, and the time spent changing classes is decreased, so you don't, do not lose as many minutes changing classes as on the seventh year day. And one change there, the teachers now teach five classes per year. So going to the block, we would have six per year, so an extra class per teacher. So that would add, you know, roughly 25 extra selections for kids. Just a sample lesson plan on a four by four block. We broke it into 
three components. Explanation, depending on how long your block is, 20 to 25 minutes. Application, 45 to 55 minutes. And then the synthesis, approximately 20 to 25. Think about it as the explanation as your opening, the application portion as you apply the knowledge, and then the um, synthesis as the closing. So in the first part, the explanation, that's where the teacher would state the objective, activate prior knowledge, and deliver the new material for the application, project problem-based learning, your laboratory experience, any simulation, possibly group work, uh, learning centers, use of technology, and then the synthesis would be the reteaching, the connection, and relevance, and the assessment for the day. The advantages of block scheduling, and I just highlight, rather than read all of them, I just highlight, highlighted a few that I thought were most important. On the block schedule, student engagement <coughs> would be increased through a variety of learning and teaching strategies. More opportunities provided for additional credits, advanced courses, and work-based learning opportunities. Student growth and student achievement would increase. JRTC opportunities for all students, especially advanced studies, uh, diploma students, would increase. The schedule would align to the profile of Virginia graduate with a focus on project problem-based learning and possible increase of collaboration among faculty and staff, depending on their planning period. Some of the concerns we got along the way talking with our teachers, parents, and student groups was the, the big one I think as people talked about was the longer class periods. You know, my son, daughter, 90 minutes, what's that gonna look like? And you know, we talked about how we're gonna have to change some of the ways we do with instruction, with instructional strategies and methods, where it's not a direct instruction of me giving a lecture for 90 minutes. There needs to be projects and hands-on activities broken up into that part of your instruction. So the instructional strategies and methods were one of those that the teachers brought up as something that we need to look at instructional time inclement weather was a few with making up days we've um testing we're looking at an innovative way with testing where you actually kind of go on your exam schedule where you go to the end and have all hands on deck for testing where you can do the remediation in the afternoon and that's something that montgomery county has piloted for the last year and i'll explain that more in detail later with that attendance um you know days two days for teachers and students with that pacing guides lesson plans and professional development and those are things that we work with with eastern montgomery with pacing guides and lesson plans and our professional development slide is the next one which we talked about having staff visits we've done two to eastern montgomery so far and like i said that helped develop that plc where we can ask questions and bounce ideas off of them classroom management plan was one of the areas that teachers wanted to focus on with transitions in between activities, teaching strategies, and back to the pacing guides and lesson plans. Eastern Montgomery did give us a website to go to and the teachers' emails to get pacing guides from them that we could tweak to our benefit and also with the lesson plans as well. The next slide is some possible course additions for down the road. Uh, we have a few that we'd like to implement next year and we'll pass those on at our next meeting. But these are some things that I went around and kind of polled our different departments, areas. What would you like to teach if you had that extra class available in your schedule that we could put in our core areas and our electives? And these are some of the things that were brought up from our core teachers and our elective teachers that they would like to offer our students maybe every other year and some things that we've done in the past. Athletically, the scholarship rule looks a little bit different for a block. With four classes, you have to pass three out of four. So that is a little bit of a change there from where we're at with passing classes in the point with the five. I think that's our presentation. If you have anything else to add. I am, uh, thank you first and foremost for the presentation. I appreciate the details. I know uh, I heard you reference, but um, can you explain to us the class time frames that you're proposing? You had referenced the time allotment being longer, but tell me the class time frame that you're allotting for each block. I think right now our block, what do we have from the schedule we did, a split block with third, and I 
think it was the 100 minutes, 95, 95, 95. Yeah, they're not less than 95. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, so the concern right. was obviously you just mentioned from assemblies to mm -hmm. uh, various things, weather days. If you start creeping into that, then you lose your seat time in those classes, which are pretty critical mm -hmm. uh, from that standpoint. 